Yo what's good everyone? The long awaited Kafka is out in a few weeks so let's look at a kit, relics, teams and light cones. I did a quick 5 minute guide for Kafka a few days ago so if you just want some quick advice on how to approach her, I think that video would be better for you. The link's in the description. With Kafka having a damage over time mechanic that a lot of us aren't used to though, a lot of people don't know how much speed to give her and her teammates, how much effect hit rate, what about break effect? I'm doing this in depth guide that you're watching now to answer all of those questions. Let's get straight into it. At the moment a kit it looks like this. The skill deals damage to one enemy as well as a little bit of damage to the enemies adjacent to it. If the target enemy is currently receiving damage over time, which I'll refer to from now on as DOT, all DOT effects from any character are immediately triggered for a percentage of their original damage. Her ultimate deals damage to all enemies with a chance for them all to become shocked, which is lightning DOT, and at the same time they'll immediately take damage from all DOT effects, just like with a skill thanks to her ascension too. Shock will last for two turns and it'll deal damage at the start of those turns. She has a nice talent too. Once per turn, whenever an ally uses a basic attack, she triggers a follow-up attack on the same enemy that deals lightning damage with a chance to apply shock. Now there are a lot of stats that people have seen associated with DOT characters like Kafka, but some of you might not fully understand what those stats do. Or maybe you do know what the stats do, but you don't know how much of those stats you need to build a character with purpose rather than just guessing. Reading big paragraphs on the internet and trying to decipher formulas can be complicated, so I've done my best to explain everything in an easy to digest way. This applies to Kafka but also applies to other characters too. Let's look at effect hit rate first. What does it do and how much do we need? This is the formula for working out what chance your abilities and effects have to trigger. Now you look at it and want to run away right? I don't blame you but I've made it easy for you. In blue there are four parts of the formula. One of them, the enemy's debuff resistance, we can dismiss anyway so it's pretty much three parts. Most of the time when you choose to play Kafka will be against enemies with lightning weakness. Enemies with with lightning weakness won't have shock resistance, because that would contradict the entire point of them being weak to lightning in the first place. Because of this, I'm going to dismiss the enemy's debuff resistance. And how much easier on the eye does that formula look now? Just bear in mind, if the enemy has shock resistance, you won't be able to dismiss that last part, and you'll need more effect hit rate to compensate for it. Now you might be thinking, I've read the description for Kafka's ult and it says she has a 100% base chance to inflict shock. Does that not mean it's guaranteed? Unfortunately no, that's not what it means. Base chance is one of the three other parts of the formula, but the good news is it's the easiest part. You'll find it in your character's kit descriptions. For example, Pale is ult has a 100% base chance, Sampo's talent has a 65% base chance, Kafka has a 100% base chance with her ult, and an extra 30% from her ascension 6 trace, making 130%. So now there are only two parts to fill in. The second part, effect hit rate, is another easy part. Effect hit rate, as we all know, is a stat that we get from relics, light cones and traces. The more effect hit rate we have, the more likely our abilities and effects are to trigger but it is possible to hit a 100% chance to trigger and then any effect hit rate after that is a waste which you'll see in a minute. Let's say we don't manage to get effect hit rate in any of our relic stats. Kafka gets 18% from her traces anyway so let's put that in the formula. The last part of the formula is the enemy's effect resistance. It's different to debuff resistance and can be a little more awkward than the other parts of the formula because it varies for each enemy and I don't think there's anywhere to conveniently find them in the game. Instead, you can find them on the Star Rail fandom website Website. But just take my word for it, for the majority of the time, this part of the formula will just be 0.6. Now we can work out the chance of us actually triggering shock with Kafka's ult, and it has a 92.04% chance. That's enough in my opinion, but if you did want to take it up to 100%, and you didn't know how much effect hit rate you'd need to do it, you'd just need to use this formula. Again, dismissing the debuff resistance, you'd now get this. Changing the enemy's resistance to 0.6, you get this. Now all you need to do is input the base chance from your character's kit description. Kafka has a 130% base chance, so you'd need 29% effect hit rate. She gets 18% from her traces, which means you'd just need 11%. Sampo has a 100% base chance from his ultimate, so you'd need 67% effect hit rate, but he gets 18% from his traces as well, so you'd just need 49%. His talent has a 65% base chance, so you'd need 157% effect hit rate. 18% from his traces means you'd need 139%, which is a lot but if you can give him 100%, he'd get the full bonus from the Pan Galactic set, and that'd give him a 78% chance to inflict wind share, which is decent. Now let's look at speed. Turn order and speed in Star Rail can be awkward, because of variables both on your end with your stats, and your enemy's end with debuffs and such. I'll show you how to build speed with purpose though, and how much you need so you can get the most out of your Kafka. In Star Rail, 
solve is a stat called action value. You get it by dividing 10,000 by your character's speed. Don't ask why 10,000, it's just the number that Star Rails fan works best for the formula. The higher your speed, the lower your action value, and I'll show you why you want low action value. In Memory of Chaos, each cycle lasts a certain amount of action points. The first cycle of each wave is 150 action points, and the cycles after are 100 action points. However many times your character's action value goes into the cycle's action points determines how many turns you have in that cycle. Let's say you have 133 speed. That gives you an action value of 75.2. That only goes into 150 once, which means your character only gets one turn in that cycle. If you increase your speed to 134 though, your action value becomes 75, which goes into 150 twice, meaning you get two turns in that cycle. Action points and action value carry over across multiple cycles too. So if you're looking at six cycles, the total action points for those six cycles is 650 action points. 124 speed gives you an action value of 80.6, which would get your character eight turns within those six cycles, whereas 123 speed, which is 81.3 action value, would only get you seven turns. When you adjust your speed by a single digit and you gain an extra turn in whatever duration of cycles you're looking at, we call that specific speed that made the difference a breakpoint. If you manage to defeat a wave before the cycle ends, then that cycle doesn't get added to the amount of cycles you've used, which can make the difference for you to get the stars that you need. Sometimes having an extra turn with your characters can be the difference between beating that cycle before it ends, which is why players aim for specific breakpoints. With Memory of Chaos lineups always changing though, we don't have the resources to be able to build relic sets tailored towards different amounts of cycles, so it's easiest to just aim for popular breakpoints. Most people recommend 134 speed. Kafka has a base speed of 100, 5 star boots at level 15 give her another 25, so she'll need 9 speed from her substats to hit the 134 breakpoint. I recommend building 1 point of speed more on your other DOT characters, purely so that they can apply their DOTs for Kafka to then trigger during her turn. If you're running Kafka with Asta, you'll be able to give the team an extra 53 speed with a level 12 ultimate, so you might even be in a situation where you can aim for the 201 speed breakpoint. This will give you triple turns in the first cycle, and a bunch of extra turns in longer battles which means a lot of DOT procs, but you'll need to build 148 speed on your characters which can be tough. Next we'll look at break effect, but for context, understand there are two different types of DOT. There's break DOT and normal DOT. Break DOT is triggered when your character breaks an enemy's shield, and scales off that character's break effect and the character level. Normal DOT is when the DOT is built into the character's kit without the need to break a shield like in Kafka's ultimate, Sampo's talent, Luca's skill, and so on. It's like normal damage, so it scales off attack, elemental damage, and DOT damage bonus, but bear in mind, it's not able to crit. I recommend building for normal DOT because it's easier to trigger. I'd use an attack body, speed boost, lightning damage sphere, and an attack rope. Now if you want to, you could go with a break effect rope. It won't do anything for a raw damage of a DOT built into a kit, but if you can break an enemy shield, the damage for the break and the break DOT will scale off a break effect. I just think it's awkward with so many different characters having damage procs at the same time. You run the risk of breaking with a different character instead. Then all that break effect on Kafka would be for nothing. I am looking forward to seeing gameplay of break effect builds though once she drops. The best 4 piece will be Sizzling Thunder. Musketeer's a good alternative. You could even mix and match 2 pieces, aiming for lightning damage, attack or speed. 4 piece Thief's an option if you want to go for a full break effect build but I don't recommend it. For substats, attack will increase the damage, speed reduces the action value for more turns, 11% effect hit rate will be enough to guarantee shock once you've unlocked a recension 6 trace, and then break effect will increase the break damage and break DOT. For the planar ornament set, I recommend space ceiling station for the extra attack. To be honest, I don't think there's anything else I suggest running on her. If you're feeling a bit experimental and running her outside of DOT comps, purely as a flex to break some shields, you could give a broken keel to give everyone some crit damage. Obviously not the best use for her, but it's an option if you wanted to do something off meta. I'll talk more about that in the team section, which we're going on to now, but if you still have questions about stats, don't hesitate to leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe if you're getting value out of this. As for teams, it'll be easier if I just talk individually about each character she'll synergize with, and naturally that'll lead into discussion on team comps. Sampo will provide DOT of a different element. He brings a little bit of extra damage to the table, and his ultimate has the chance to increase the amount of DOT the enemies take from all characters. This makes him useful in team comps with a lot of DOT characters, like ones with Kafka 
Luca, Sampo and Luca. Luca has the chance to increase all damage that a single target takes, making him good for bosses and his skill point positive. He also brings some damage to the table, and if he's holding resolution shines, he can shred the enemy's defense which benefits DOT. You could run him in the DOT trio I just mentioned, or you could just run him in Kafka and then throw in Silverwolf, Paler or Astra in the flex slot. Astra provides the team with speed, attack, and has two playstyles, where you can either use a skill every turn for higher burst uptime, or a more skill point friendly one where she weaves in some basic attacks every now and then, which can also apply burn. If you have an E4, as well as meshing cogs or memories of the past at S5, you can maintain 100% uptime on her ultimate. Unfortunately, it'll require a lot of skill points. With her ult at level 12, she'll give the team 53 speed. If you can then build your character's speed up to 148, you'll hit 201 speed, and with it you'll be able to proc everyone's DOT 13 times with Kafka's skill alone. That's just in 6 cycles and then you have an ultimate as well. Serval's a nice flex option for Kafka teams, especially against opponents weak to lightning. You can inflict shock multiple times at the same time with different characters. If you're stacking them against enemies weak to lightning and then extending that shock with Serval's ultimate, you're gonna find yourself melting through them shields. Throwing Bailu or Lynx in there would make for a good lightning quantum team with Silverwolf. Talking of Silverwolf, she has massive value to DOT comps, because she reduces the enemy's defense which is a big factor in the DOT formula. She also implants a weakness to an element on the enemy, and reduces their elemental damage resistance to that element. Of course, if you don't have her, Paler also reduces the enemy's defense so she has big value too. In terms of defensive options, Ran any she has a strong synergy with, so we'll discuss some she has a little bit of synergy with. Just know you can run her with anyone though, whoever the best defensive option for your account is. Preservation units have a little bit of synergy because of trend of the universal market. When the wearer is attacked, it has a chance to burn the enemy for two turns. It won't be massive damage so I don't suggest running a preservation character if you feel your team's more comfy with a healer. Just know that with this Lycone you'll be getting a bit of extra DOT off, which could make for fun team comps. Lorcha is a good option, especially with Kafka's follow-up attacks. More instances of dealing damage means more instances of healing, so they have a little bit of synergy. If you're a free to play and don't have any 5 star options, you can just use Natasha. She has some benefit to the team outside of a healing, for the simple fact that she can hold fleet to the ageless and give the team attack. You could even take it a step further and give a 4 piece messenger to buff the team's speed. For Kafka teams, one thing I look forward to the most is seeing what healer they release in the future that might be tailored towards DOT comps. If you're feeling a little bit more experimental and want to try something off meta that no one else is using, you could throw Hook in a team with Kafka and Sampo. Obviously the team won't do well in the higher memory of chaos stages, but for simulated universe it'll have its uses. World 4 in particular would be a good place to try it with Sparog being weak to all three elements. Hook applies burn and with her E4 she can apply it to adjacent enemies. So when Svarog starts summoning robots in his giant hands, that might be something different to play styles you've experienced so far. The dog Lycone's a nice free to play option for her too with a lot of uptime in this team. For non DOT teams, a lot of people use Sampo when they don't have another win character for breaking shields. People have been using him against Kafka in simulated universe world 5 since launch. If you don't have many lightning options, you could use your Kafka in the same way against enemies like Svarog in world 4. Of course, it won't demonstrate a full potential. I definitely don't advise pulling her just to play her outside of DOT, but if you're a big Kafka simp just trying to squeeze her into all your teams, the option's there, just know it won't be effective against the harder content in the game, like the higher memory of chaos stages. If you do want to try her in this support role, maybe you don't care about meta and want to run her with blade because of story and lore, you could give her the two piece broken keel we talked about earlier. Obviously Kafka won't benefit from it, but blade will. If you give the healer four piece messenger and two piece fleet of the Ageless, you can use another DPS in the last slot, and then both them and Blade will be getting loads of buffs. You might argue that Serval can already do this flex role, but with Kafka being a Nihility unit she can hold Resolution Shines to shred the enemy's defense. Then Blade and your other DPS are going to be dealing even more damage. Again, this seems not going to help you in the higher memory of Chaos stages, but it's an option for those that don't care about it. Now I've got all the light cones on screen right now so you can pause the video and have a look at which you prefer. What I'll do next though is compare the most popular recommendations. Firstly, in 1.3, we might be getting a new Nihility Lycone added to Herta's store that increases break effect, DOT as well as regenerating energy. I won't drop the stats or description in case it changes, but it's worth keeping an eye on that one and maybe holding back on Kafka's signature until we know more about it. If you do go for Kafka's signature, you're going to get increased damage, speed and a chance to inflict a road, which is an extra layer of shock. Also note, to increase the chance of inflicting a road, try and get a bit of effect hit rate in a substance 
as. She'll need 67% of Fed's hit rate to guarantee a road, but with her getting 18% from her traces, she'll need 49% extra. Without you building the extra 49%, she has just under a 71% chance to trigger the effect. While it's her best in slot, you might end up sacrificing attack and speed in her relics just to build the extra effect hit rate. The next best option, and one you don't have to build extra effect hit rate on, is good night and sleep well. If you can get it to S5, it'll provide a similar level of value to a signature anyway. S5 gives you up to 72% extra damage, which also applies to a DOT. For free to plays, S5 for matter increases break effect by 32%, as well as giving 32% extra damage to opponents affected by shock or wind share. In a team with Sampo, you'll have a lot of uptime on that. Even though I don't advise prioritizing break effects in a build, given how awkward it can be to weakness break with the intended character, having extra break effects is nice for the times you do manage to weakness break with her. Resolution Shines is a good one to have on someone in the team. It has a chance to decrease the enemy's defense by up to 16%, which is going to make everyone's damage deal more, including DOT. I'd put it on someone else if you run an annihility character with Kafka, like in DOT teams, but as mentioned earlier, in niche teams where she's the support of flex against easier content, Kafka can hold it if you want other characters to deal the damage. Now, is she worth pulling? If you're a DOT enjoyer, I'd say she's the best unit for that niche that we'll get for a long time. Outside of DOT, she's usable but she's not a necessity given the fact we already have strong lightning units. We're limited for DOT units right now so I can see Kafka being a unit that gets even stronger as time goes on. If you enjoyed the video, I'll be doing guys for the 1.3 characters and I'll have one out soon for Luca too. Subscribe if you want to see those and take it easy.